During the course of this series, we've looked at some very weird and wonderful deep sky objects, but tonight we are taking it to the next level because we are going after the monsters of our universe. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. Now, up until about 400 years ago, pretty much all of our ancestors had gazed up at the night sky and created their own fairy tales about what they could see. And let's face it, they didn't really have much source material. This is all they had to go on, and yet they created the most colourful stories imaginable. Now imagine the kinds of stories they would have wrote if they knew what was truly out there. In today's episode, I'm going to be looking at some very weird objects, the first of which is going to be CG4. Now, you may remember that name from a video I did last year where I pointed this same telescope at it. Its name means Cometary Globular 4, and that's due to its shape and composition, but its more commonly referred to name amongst astronomers is God's Hand, and that's because this nebula appears to be devouring an entire galaxy. Now, we have enough science, we've done enough research to understand the true meaning behind this image. We know what's actually going on, there's a bit of a juxtaposition between these two. But can you imagine what our ancestors would have thought if they could have seen this in our night sky? Crazy. Continuing with our theme of the episode, which is pursuing the monsters of our universe, we're now going after something even more fearsome. This is Heinz Variable Nebula. The name itself refers to the variable star at the core of this nebula, but what is the most shocking part is once again the shape and appearance of this nebula, because it seems to resemble the devil in disguise. <laughs> The nebula itself is obviously spectacular in its shape, but it's the fact that the variable star is a red variable star and it produces this red-orange hue at the centre of the head of this nebula. It is a fantastic image and one that I've dedicated a lot of time towards imaging. I suppose you could probably think of a more apt description of the nebula itself. Maybe you could refer to it as the star consumer, boogeyman, the nightmare nebula. Ooh, that sounds cool. The nightmare nebula. Yeah. That one sounds cool. Which then brings us on to the third and final target of this episode. And although we've looked at monsters beforehand, for the third and final one, I'm going to switch it up slightly. Because instead, we're going to look at a pair of interacting galaxies that are in love. This is the Antennae Galaxy. This picture is comprised of two interacting galaxies. You may have heard before that our own Milky Way galaxy is on its own collision course, in a similar way to what the Antennae galaxy is currently undergoing. Our own galaxy will merge with the nearby Andromeda galaxy. Due to the vast distances in between stars, it's quite likely very few of the stars will even collide as this galactic ballet takes place. With trillions of stars involved, it's very difficult to figure out what the merger will look like. It could quite simply be a mess. But in the Antennae Galaxy's case, it can form one of the most beautiful shapes possible. I think it's quite fitting, really, that each of these two colliding galaxies has taken the shape of two halves of a heart. So there we go, three more entries into the Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition. Now, they were all captured with a remote telescope, and that's largely due to the fact that the majority of them we can't actually see in the Northern Hemisphere, either that well or at all, only through the usage of this remote telescope that I have a shot of capturing such a beautiful image, and one that is perhaps worthy of being shortlisted for the Astronomy Photographer of the Year competition. Well, I think it's fair to say that our board is getting very clustered in certain categories now, but there is still one category we are yet to enter, and that is the planets, comets and asteroids category. Next week is the final episode in which I'll be compiling entries into the Astronomy 
photographer of the year competition, which means I'm certainly going to make an entry into this category. For the next episode, I'm hoping to capture something very special. I'm going to capture the universe in motion using the help of some of the remote telescopes I use today and a $500 smart telescope that will be placed on my window ledge. It's going to be really cool and I'm very excited to share this with you and it's fair to say that I've saved the best until last. If you'd like to use some of the remote telescopes I've used in today's video to capture images of the night sky, then make sure you head to Telescope Live to try out their services. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again next week. I'm Damon Scotting and this was Astronomical.